Hey everyone, welcome to Orchard's Garage. And in this episode, we're gonna be dealing with a hard start condition, difficult to start uh, snowblower with the Tecumseh 5.5 horsepower engine in it. Now this is uh, sort of a takeoff from the last video where I did the fuel line on that gray snowblower. Now, now that was a customer's machine. Um, we have a customer's machine, we have one of mine. They're both almost the same, right? 5.5 horsepower, one says five horsepower. Tecumseh engine. Uh, like 22 inches, right? It, there's no reverse, right? It's a simple machine. Um, and I showed a little bit about it in the last video with the fuel line where you go to pull it and it kicks back. Oh boy. Oh, she's kicking. So that's the problem we have. And it's a common problem that occurs, uh, particularly on these Tecumseh engines. Now you may not see it for a long time. The machine we're gonna be looking at today uh, has this problem. Now, most of the time, you would think it's a carburetor issue. And of course, on both of these machines, right, they both had carburetor issues. On this machine, it had, uh, well, I went through three carburetors, right? Three of my carburetors, going through them, fishing through them, trying to see what I could do. Uh, and so it wasn't until like the third carburetor, I had to kind of make it from, you know, some different pieces. And I, I sorted that problem out. So that's all sussed out. So it has nothing to do with the carburetor, um, nothing to do with the fuel system. This problem is an ignition system issue. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna take a look at that, we're gonna fix it, and I'm gonna show you some stuff that a lot of people say, well, you know, rust on the, on the Magneto and everything, that doesn't really matter. Stick with me on this, and let's go through it together. I'm gonna to show you that it does matter, and in this situation, right, it, it mattered to the point where, you know, this thing was kicking back. So let's dig into it, and uh, we'll get into the video, and we'll go through the whole thing. It's not a particularly long video, about 20 minutes. I'm gonna start off with, you know, I took the carburetor off, so I'm starting this video off with the carburetor already off the machine. You don't need to do that, okay? You can leave the carburetor on, but you know, this machine needed work beyond these issues. So that's a separate video. And the carburetor, if I do that, that'll probably be a separate issue too. So let's dig into it, and we're gonna take off the tins, and we're gonna get in deep, and I'm gonna show you again what I did to fix it. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, let's just shove some two-stroke in the hole, a whole bunch of it, and we'll just lightly put the plug in. Uh, the table's moving back up again. Oh boy. Oh, she's kicking. She's kicking back, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. She's got a strong kick to it. Well, she'll run. All right, let me open the window real quick. Well, let's start taking stuff apart, guys. Let's take the gas tank out, because it's, it's really, and when things are this dirty, and it, it's just a good idea, there's no place to put fuel filters in these things. People use the same gas can they use for their lawnmower a lot of times, and, you know, let's get this cleaned out, right? So I'll take that off, it's just these two bolts. I think, what is that, three-eighths? And while we're over here, and we want to also inspect the hose, the hose looks like it's okay. We might be all right, right? And we're going to put our release agent on. And I use two-stroke. I'll use my old gas with the tranny fluid. Uh, I need to mix up some more of that. And just move that clamp over. Wow, it's really on there, huh? And then just give it a rotate. And with that release agent on, you see, you won't fight it, you won't damage the hose. That's why I use that. Before I do the carburetor, let me give this a good wash in and out. Let me do that. That way we can leave it set to dry, uh, probably in here today, because it's not that warm out today and the sun's not out. Normally I'll leave it after I wash it with the hose and the degreaser, and uh, then I'll blow it with the compressed air and try to get everything out. I'll put a little gas in it. I'll put a little you know, cap on this, I'll shake it around, I'll dump the gas out, blow it again, I might do that twice, and then generally I'll leave it in the sun, all right, but there's no real sun today, because it's black, it'll get hot, and if the machine takes more than a day to do, for whatever reason, that's even better, I leave the gas cap off and it'll dry. I'll see you guys in a few. All right, to get the cover off, you shouldn't have to take this off. This should be mounted to this piece here, over here. So leave that on, we got a bolt down here, we got a bolt on the other side, and unfortunately we've got these bolts, and you gotta at least take this bracket off, all right? So I'm gonna start working on that. I know it sucks, but that's how these Tecumis are. 
All right, we got a bolt over here. We got a little one up here. And boy, it'd be a good time to change out the hose. So let me work on that and we'll come back in a minute. All right, it's gonna be a little noisy in here because the heat's on. All right, so everything's loosened up. I didn't fully take this out. I used a wrench, socket wrench, uh, go slow. You break a bolt, you're screwed. So this bolt was real tight. We don't want to move it any more than we have to and retorquing, forget it, right? You'd have to take everything off and then you might as well clean everything out and get a new gasket. So don't use a zip gun because you'll snap. These bolts are not well hardened. And we should be able to just kind of ink it. There we go. All right, I don't know what fell, but. All right, now what we want to do, got the plug out. So what we're going to do while we're here, all right, we're going to clean up. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, let me get you in close. There's a lot of rust on this. And what can happen is the rust gets in the way and it can cause issues uh, with your ignition. And because it's not a lawnmower, there's no, um, there's no brake, right, that flies around the flywheel scrubbing on these things. So they don't get cleaned. Because a lawnmower, you have the kill, right? You have the, the engine bail right whatever they want to call it and it will rub on those magnets and on the whole flywheel to stop the blade really to stop the engine it keeps them nice and clean for the most part uh, but in these you don't have that and they operate in a really damp environment and um, condensation and water ice so they get bad what we do is we're going to clean these off we're going to take this off we're going to clean it off as well and we're going to check in here after we do that, we're going to check in here to make sure that the flywheel is centered properly. So let me get started on that. Hopefully I explain that well. And then, of course, when we go to set it back up again at 10 thousandths, we'll be able to get a really good gap because all this is going to be clean and we can get it nice and tight. And that will make sure that the spark is where it needs to be. We're also going to check this with an ohmmeter to make sure we're okay. The problem, like I said, with, with these snow blowers is there's handles and obstructions in the way and sometimes it's better to actually do like a manual focus because so many things will get in the way and cause focus issues. So this is quarter and you know we want good grounds. I often say good grounds and people think well well this is grounding the coil, the signal wire. Is that what you mean? Well yes but I want good connections and so the body of the engine is considered to be the ground point. And that's what you're grounding to. So that's your negative, we'll say that's your negative connection. Even though that's not really what it is in AC. Um, but we want to make sure that these things are making good contact to here. And you could see already that it's struggling. So I'm going to clean this up. We'll clean this up. And then we're going to do an ohmmeter reading. Okay, so you can see how rusted that is, right? And there were chunks over here, which I pushed off with my finger. Let's get that cleaned up. And we got all the noise going on in the shop. So I'm going to use an abrasive wheel because this is pretty bad. So at least here we can use it. That's good. Try to keep the dust away from my camera. Hold on. It's getting on it. I'm blowing the camera. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Oh, sorry. I'm in that Christmassy mood. Now we're just going to do here with the Scotch Bright pad, and that way we're ensuring a good connection. All right. While we're here, we're going to take our low pressure air and just blow out this line. Right. Watch his face. That's our fuel line. All right. Let's get into that nut. Let me get the deep socket. Get that back on with a deep socket. All right, let me get in. And it looks like it's okay. Uh, it's moved, but just ever so. It looks good. All right, so we can put this back and we can move forward. Hopefully the glare isn't too bright, but I'll shout it out anyway. All right, so just hit it on the wire wheel and give it a quick wash. Get some degreaser. Blow it. It's pretty dirty as I just blew the solvent off of it. 
So now we're going to have good contact on all these corner, these these mating points, right? That's the important thing. And let's just go from the body of the coil to the secondary plug wire. Okay. All right, 4.2K, 4.26, 4.24. That's not bad. It's a little over 4,000 ohms. And we'll go here. 296. That's about right, right? And I'll actually have a video out soon on uh, all the coils. I've measured all of these kinds of different coils from all the top manufacturers that we typically use. And I'll be having that video out real soon, probably in midwinter-ish, January, February. And like I said, I went through all of these coils. So I actually might go watch that real quick and just to make sure... All right, so that's what it looks like. So blow it good with compressed air because there'll be a lot of sort of metal um, stuck to it, you know, metal fragments. <clears throat> that's no good. We're going to put a little white grease on that, and then let's put the coil on. All right, so I put a little grease on. And everything, all the areas that, just a light coat. And then a little bit of oil on these threads. Now here's a tip for, these, these are actually, these little bolts are bigger than Briggs and if you ever strip out a Briggs keep some of these bolts around right because that's your backup right it's just a little bit bigger and it might save your butt I got my ten thousandths let's just snug this up up and out of our way All right pull it up just kind of snug it All right, then make sure the magnet is straddling the armature properly. Drop your ten thousandths on. You can go up to twelve thousandths, be my recommendation. Put that on there. Loosen it. Let it pull down. Okay. Tighten it. Now, they're all laminates. And... I'm going to want to make sure that's tight. I use my stubby. Get my stubby wrench on it. That's good. That's good. Because the, the laminates are pulling in. That's good. And we're done. Okay. Uh, we got one more thing. This keeps a little bit of rust off for a little bit. All right, I put a little bit of white grease on that connector too. And we're all good to go, okay? So now we're gonna, the next thing we're gonna do with this is just gonna check on this. This looks okay. So you could replace this right now, but it doesn't look that bad. Let's just feel it. Make sure it's got something coming out the end. Yeah. Okay, it's good. So I'm gonna put a little bit of chain wax or something in here. These things fit really tight, especially in the bolt hole areas because that's where it's been collapsed, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flex it just a little bit. And I'm just gonna grab with my pliers and just pull away. Just to kind of bell mouth this thing a little bit more in the problem areas. All right, and it'll, otherwise you'll be fighting it there we go. We'll bell mouth just the edges a little bit. Just flex it. All right. Okay. Now, last thing. All right, probably the last time I like to use a good chain wax or a chain lube. I'm running out. All right, get some in there. Get some in the pole area. And a lot of these, there's a hook area where the spring stay is, and it's over here. You're not going to be able to see it, but you'll see it, the hook, the hook of the spring. So we're going to shove our hose, try to get, fill that area up a little bit. And now pull it through all the way. Oh, that feels nice. All the way to the end. All right, and that's going to wax up, so 
It's not going to cause a problem. It's not. There's no dirt to collect, and you got to put something in it. And again, I wash these, and the spiders crawling out of it and everything. All right, let's go put this on the machine. Now, instead of the grease, right, you could also put your chain wax on, right, and that'll pr protect the, the gears and the magnet. And this stuff is like Cosmoline. And you could spray, you know, we could even spray the coil and all of that, too. But just to, you know, as an example, and that's one of the nice things about this product. All right, now, to put this on, right, it's going to be a bit of work, right, but we should have made our lives a little bit easier. So we just kind of want to lay it on here. We have to get everything sort of lined up. All right. And we got all the tins to deal with. And we need to take a bit of work. we got to line that up. And probably going to need to get you know, this guy goes on the top. It's almost there. I get my little my little mallet. Sometimes my little rubber mallet helps. This is on. This is almost on this side. And I, that all right, so my left side's on. And this side's almost on. And so this goes over and this goes under. Okay. So one's over, one's under. And I'm here you. Okay. But one's over, one's under. And we're, we're basically there, all right? Let me bolt it down. I'll show you what's next after we get the bolts in. Uh, lubricate all the bolts. So the head bolts put in oil, clean the threads. And uh, these down here, I'm gonna put a little, the ones that go with these two, I'm gonna put a little bit of no seize on. Now let me get that started and then we'll come up in the top and I'll talk about what we wanna do up top. So just a quick look at the bolts, right? And this one really had a hard time getting out. And this is why I say you can't, it doesn't pay to torque, right? You, they're, they're jammed in there. This one, this one's worn here. Let's look at the motor real quick. This one I can't get out, or at least I wouldn't try. And so I didn't, right? So torquing that is useless because the resistance on that bolt, just to turn it is probably close to the torque reading. And that's going to interfere with the total torque reading. If I try to keep taking that out, uh, and I've let it sit overnight too with trying to spray stuff down there, it doesn't matter. It's not going to get down there. Um, I'm lucky I got these out and I didn't need to take it out anyway. I just slid it out of my way to get the top back on, you know, the pull start cover. So I'm going to clean those bolts off real quick and then I'm going to just tighten everything up as best I can. It, it just don't don't bother talking things. You're not going to be doing anything. You may not even be tightening the bolt. Um, if I keep trying to get this one out, right, it'll probably snap. Then what? All right, so these are just, you know, they're not tight, right? The bottom bolts are just on there. And I ran the, these on the wire wheel. And then I just lubricate them with oil. So let's just tighten it. Now, we can still kind of use something of a torque pad. I'm going to go slow and just get pull everything back in. And the thing is, I've been doing this for a long time, so I think that one was a little crunchy. So I can, I can feel it. Yeah, that one that one's jammed in there. The idea isn't that you're talking the bolt. The idea is that you're pulling the whole sandwich together and you have an even force as best as possible so that you don't leak and have cause leaks in the future. And everything seals up. Now on new engines, uh, and I've done this, it actually goes by bolt stretch, which is a very different kind of thing. That feels good. Uh, maybe one more. I can kind of feel it. That one's good. Yeah, that one made it. Yeah, she's still pulling in. And, th and this one, these here, you're actually pulling in another sandwich, right? You're pulling in this bracket and that other piece. That feels good. Oh, good. This one I'm not going to try to get out because it could snap the bolt that's holding this top piece in. That's nice and tight. It's trying to re, you know, compress the sandwich. That's beautiful. Done. Okay, I'm gonna check this one one more time. Done. All right, we tighten up the side bolts and we're, we're done with that. We'll move to the next step. 
It's all the way up. That's run. We're gonna kind of do that choke, and I got gas in it. We'll press the primer a whole bunch of times, and if we have to, we'll we'll have to you know help it out. But let's see what happens. Is it gonna kick? All right, I'm not getting anything. So let's help it out. Let's get some two-stroke in that. It should be up all the way. This could be causing us a problem. I smell gas. Let's see. Let's just see if we can restart it. Well, I think she cleaned up pretty good. If you notice, that was vibrating a lot, although I don't know if the camera will pick that up at 24 frames a second. Uh, but I, I, what I did was I just turned in the idle screw. That's the uh, throttle position idle screw. We used to call that curb idle in cars because there was a gap between the throttle blade, you know, actuator and the actual screw. So I just brought that in a little bit. We don't have any adjustment here. <clears throat> it seemed to clean up, although... I got a little bit more performance, a little bit better sound out of it when I just added a little bit of choke. You could go in there and drill the car, but if you notice, it started to run better. So I say we're going to leave it at this. I think it's 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 good, okay? No need to touch it. It is running at 3,600 RPMs. That's a little bit much for this motor. Uh, we could back that off a little bit. Um, we got to do the oil change. So let's get to the next step. All right, thanks for watching, everybody, and that's it for this one. Um, I have another machine over here right now. It's uh, almost identical to the red machine that I did, the Craftsman 24-inch that's up there in, uh, in the video library. I just did recently. I'm going to get to this one. I just got it cleaned today. Um, that's most of what we do, and really the biggest problem with this gray machine and the ignition system and the carburetor was all the fill. So as you, many of you guys know that watch me, I always like to start off with cleaning these guys whenever possible. Today I had one of these rare days and good Lord gave me, you know, a nice day with a hose that wasn't completely frozen and super freezing cold outside. It was actually a really nice day. It was about 40 something degrees, right? I was actually making a little bit of a sweat and that's it. It's going to be cold again. So especially with these old snow machines, just keep in mind, right? This machine over here, right? This is an older machine, same as the red one I just did, the two gray ones. If you've got a 5.5 horsepower Takumi engine, um, it's old now, it's, and God knows what year it is, right? I think they stopped making them, and you guys might know more than I, maybe 2008, 2009, right? So that's quite a long time ago, and I suppose if it was kept, like this machine was, I think was maybe in a shed, it's not as nice, it's got a little bit more rust on it, I am gonna hopefully get this thing up to a nice condition for the customer. The last red one I just did, that one was really sweet, right? If it's kept inside and it's not used much, you probably won't see this problem. But if, if it is getting old and if it's been outside and if it's been used a lot and it's salt has gotten on it, that's where we're going to start to see these issues. So let's not get rid of these machines. They're getting rare. They were really nice. Some of them were still made in the United States. Let's do what we can to save these things. and pick them out of the garbage and, uh, you know, get them from friends and go buy them for a few bucks. And, and let's keep these, uh, these old girls running, all right? I'll see you guys on the next one.